Hello, data science students. I hope you're all doing well, staying happy, healthy, and safe. Ah, it's the end of the semester. You guys have made it, and that's that's awesome. Uh, today's the last day of classes, uh, and uh, tomorrow starts final exams for some of you. Fortunately, in this class, you don't have a final exam, but you got that final project, which is the topic of today's class meeting. A lot of you showed up. Like, I think we had 18 people, which is awesome. Uh, thank you guys for coming, and uh, apologies for being slightly late, because, uh, you know, senior project presentations and the subsequent faculty discussion uh, went uh, extra long today, so that's nice. Uh, thank you to Riley for stepping in and uh, fielding some of your questions before I got there. I really appreciate that. Uh, so let's, let's dive right in. Some of the questions that were asked today. The first question I was asked is, is it possible for our neural, neural network to be 100% accurate on the test cases? And the answer is yes, but it's unlikely. So your neural network has to be trained very well. It's got to have really, really good examples. It is possible to exhaustively train your, your neural network with every possible test case. Uh, it's not necessary to train your neural network with every possible test case, uh, but you can. Uh, if you want to get 100%, you'll probably have to do it, you know, train it with every possible uh, standard and tricky test case. And remember, you are only scored for your final grade on the standard test cases, not the tricky ones. The tricky ones are just if you want to get higher on the leaderboard and potentially go for that bonus point, you know, at the end of the end of the semester. Uh, but yes, it is technically possible. Uh, for the standard test cases, uh, we worked it out uh, on, on the, the video meeting earlier. Uh, there are 36 possible uh, standard test cases. So, you know, you've got your 10 by 10 image uh, with your, your five pixel wide dice face. And, you know, there, there's a, a six by six array of possible locations that that die face could be in that 10 by 10 image. Uh, if, if, if you have uh, trouble wrapping your head around that, which I apparently was today because I said it was five by five, it's actually six by six. Um, you can draw that out on a piece of graph paper <clears throat> and, uh, and visualize, you know, what that, that should look like. Uh, so, yes, it is technically possible to get 100 percent accuracy. Uh, I've had three students, when I gave this uh, previously, actually get 100% accuracy. So it's, it's unlikely. And I, I suspect there's a bit of, of, of randomness involved because the, the way that you know, the neural network uh, trains and learns involves a little bit of random jitter in that uh, back propagation uh, uh, phase where it's, it's learning in between each of your repetitions. Uh, so there, 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 there is a little bit of randomness involved. So you, some of you said you got up to 90, 99.4% accuracy, which is pretty darn good. That, that's effectively 100% in my book. Uh, but if you are failing on very specific test cases, it's possible that you need to come up with, uh, one, double check to make sure that those specific cases are actually sensical, that they, they make sense and are actually representing the die face that you're trying to train it for. Because it could be that you made a typo. Uh, I've had students uh, have their test cases fail only on uh, die faces of five because they, they made a typo in, in the, the, the die face, you know, when they were typing up their training data. And it would only fail on that one because it had learned the wrong pattern. So go back and, and make sure that uh, the data that you're training it on is, you know, proper. Um, let's see. Uh, if you're scoring around 15 to 17 percent accuracy, uh, that that's effectively random for this data set. So you know, one out of six. Uh, so if you're you're scoring in that range, your network's probably not learning very well. If it's scoring much less than that, you've probably got some bad examples, and it's doing negative training. So it, it's learning the wrong response for you know a, possibly a valid input. Uh, but uh, yeah, keep keep working it up higher and higher. You can submit your neural network as many times as you want, which is another question. Uh, we're going to take the highest score that your neural network gets for your final grade. So there's no risk in trying new stuff. Train your network over and over and over, and it's possible that some of your training methods might not work out, and your neural network might actually get less smart. If that happens, don't panic. I'm going to use your highest score to calculate your final grade. So uh, also your highest score is what's going to appear on the leaderboard if you, if you choose to submit to the leaderboard. 
Uh, so there, there's, there's no risk in trying new methods. Train it up as high as you can get and try new methods. And if it lowers uh, the performance of the neural network, you're still going to get graded based on that highest performance you got. Um, yeah, that uh, those were actually the questions. There, there weren't a whole heck of a lot of questions about the final project. Um, there was one more, and I'm going to try to switch in OBS to uh, my uh, desktop view to answer this one. Uh, one person asked about converting if they they, they did their if they did their uh, training data as an image, how to turn that into a uh, a one dimensional array of ones and zeros. So I'm going to show you here an example. This isn't real Python code. This is sort of pseudo codey, uh, but but uh, the, the the pattern is going to follow if you can translate this into uh, into Python that'll work for your code. So let's say hypothetically you you made some sort of image using magic, and uh, you wanted to loop through that image and make a list of ones and zeros, and that list of ones and zeros being a a training case. So let's say you wanted to have a list that was your your flattened uh, image. That's just going to be your ones and zeros. So what you want to do is loop over the rows and columns in your image. Uh, so for y in rows of your image, um, that would probably look something like this. Range length of your image. And th this, this also works if you, if you did this by making um, this either uh, a, a pixel-based image in like Python image library, or if you just did it as like a, a 2D array, uh, this approach works for flattening that into a one-dimensional array, one, one, regardless of which approach you decided to take. And so you're going to loop over the, uh, the rows in your image, <clears throat> and then you're going to want to loop over the columns in your image. So in range length of uh, image row Y. So this value right here should actually be the same for all the rows in your image, but this is, this is the proper way to kind of code that up. And then you're going to want to construct some sort of if statement. Uh, so if pixel value at image xy equals uh, a white pixel, so a face of your die, then append to your flattened image or your flattened list, whatever you want to call it, a one. Uh, else you want to append a zero to your flattened image. And pardon my typos. And then at the end of this process, flattened image should be a list of zeros and <laughs> zeros and ones uh, with a length of 100. So since it's a 10 by 10 image, you'd expect to have 100 ones and zeros in the, the flattened list that you're going to use as your training input. So what that guy should look like is, is something like this. So, you know, a bunch of uh, zeros, some ones where the, uh, the, the white portion of your die faces are all the way on out to the very end. And this is one training case. And remember, this is sort of like the, the, the front of your flashcard. So this is what you're showing. And then the, uh, the training output is going to be something on the range from 0.1 to 0.6 for representing the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 aside of your die phase. Okay. So those were the questions that uh, you guys were asking. 
Uh, if you have other questions, let me know. Both me and Riley are going to be available. Uh, we're on Discord, we're on Zoom, we're on Skype, whatever you need, however you need to contact us. Email, of course, forgetting the old-fashioned email. Uh, matter of fact, email is probably the best way to open that conversation. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, that is, shoot me an email. Uh, I, I, I check it constantly, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to meet with you pretty much any time. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let either me or Riley know, or post to the questions channel on the, uh, the class Discord. Again, I've said it a couple times, it delights me to no end to see you guys help each other on the questions channel, so please uh, go and ask your questions there. Uh, Riley will answer there. I'll answer there. Some of the other, some of your, your, your colleagues in the class will also answer there. So, so please, you know, take advantage of that opportunity. And plus, it's really good to see you guys help each other. And it, it gives me faith that those of you helping understand the problem well enough to help, which is awesome. That's the kind of thing we want to see. Uh, again, it's been great having you folks in the class. It's been fun. I, I've had a blast. Uh, it's been great getting to see you guys on Zoom. Uh, getting to chat with you in Discord and on email and Skype and everywhere else. Uh, I hope you have a great end of the semester. And I can't say it enough. If you need anything, let me know. Let Riley know we're here to help. And uh, I, I hope you guys have a great, uh, great end of the semester and a great break between now and next semester or for those of you who are graduating now and whatever's coming next. Anyway, have a good one, folks. We'll see you soon.